However, during this uh, prolonged uh, life, a disease lingers and starts to develop in uh, some of us, eventually in most of us. Let's try and understand a little bit of uh, what's going on in this disease and what we are trying to do uh, to overcome it. So, the story is as follows. So, you know, Alzheimer's disease uh, uh, wasn't a disease that uh, humans suffered uh, uh, throughout uh, uh, the generations. It is the story of uh, the increase in our lifespan. As you can see in this uh, population distribution, you see this triangle, that's, that's how population distribution was in the 50s. You see a small portion, a relatively small portion of the population <coughs> was above a pension age. All right? This is this dashed line. Majority of the population was below that. However, what is going to happen 35 years from now? Look at that triangle. You see the proportion of uh, people above the age of 65, about pension age, is about to increase. And this trend will increase furthermore. So, what does it mean? It means that the past, okay, belongs to the young and the future, okay, belongs to the elderly. Okay? The proportion of the elderly increases with time. However, owning the future, okay, has its toll. Let's try to understand what, it, what uh, is this tool. Now, as I mentioned, life uh, span, life expectancy, increases with time. As you can see in the 19th uh, century, life expectancy at birth was roughly close to 50 years. And then, as we get to nowadays, it reaches 85. And we, if we extrapolate it further, we expect it to reach 95. However, what's the downside? The downside is that throughout the last 10, 15, 20 years, this life, indeed it's a longer life, but it has a poor life quality. Okay? Many of the elderly at these ages spend a lot of time or spend their time in a nursing home, uh, or with uh, uh, adjacent, uh, constant uh, uh, care, without really enjoying life. So, what happens to uh, uh, the, uh, this elderly population? As you can see, most of them uh, suffer from uh, dementia, and the most prevalent form of dementia is Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> This is, this is why this particular type of dementia is of concern to us. There are other forms of dementia, but they're uh, of uh, uh, low prevalence. And look at the numbers. 10% of the people above the age of 65 will have Alzheimer's. And this percentage increases to 30, 35 in people above 85. And then every five years, this per, uh, percentage doubles itself. It doesn't mean a good thing, okay? If we plan on increasing our life expectancy above 85, it means that almost the majority of the individuals above 85 will have Alzheimer's disease. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of the lucky amongst us, as we age, will exhibit a mild decrease in our cognitive capacity. Okay, this is a graph of the cognitive capacity. There is some sort of a, a decline in aging, in normal aging. However, some of the individuals, eventually it's the majority, will exhibit a condition called mild cognitive impairment. The mild cognitive impairment. All of a sudden we forget things. We can't, we do not exactly know where we are. Okay? It starts with little things, but eventually this trajectory of decrease in cognitive uh, capacity goes down. And this is the condition that we are most afraid of as we age. The condition that leads us to dementia, mostly Alzheimer's related dementia. Now, let's look at what happens in the brain, okay, for a moment, or, or two moments. This is a slice of a human brain, okay? All these images are slices of a human brain. And let's see what happens as the disease progresses. And I mean Alzheimer's disease. I have one, thanks. 
as you can see this uh, 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 brown staining, this brown spot, as we progress in stages of the disease from one, two, three, four and on, you can see that this brown region expands throughout the brain until it encompasses the entire brain. And here what you can see is how does the brain of a diseased Alzheimer's patient a brain look like compared to a normal brain. So it shrinks. Why, why does it shrink? It shrinks because there is a cell loss, death of cells, death of neurons in the brain. Okay? So you can see, according to these images, how the disease is progressive, eventually resulting in a deformation of the brain. That, that's what happens in the brain for many, many people in the population as they age. What happens? Now, we may get a little bit technical, but in the end it will end. In the end of the presentation will be over it, so don't worry about that. <laughs> so, what happens? We, we think we, we name the bad guy in the disease, okay? In every disease you need to find the bad guy and target it. In Alzheimer's disease there is some you know, confusion or arguments, but the majority of people think that this protein called amyloid beta is the bad guy. It, it starts as an innocent protein, but with time, this protein uh, forms a, a, a structures which aggregate okay, uh, more and more. And eventually, we see these plaques, these aggregates of this protein in the brain. All of these different forms of the protein are toxic for brain cells, this way or another, in different mechanisms. It doesn't matter right now which mechanisms. So, our attempts or our aim is to prevent this kind of aggregation. Okay, so what's been done? Okay, what, what has been done so far and what do we plan on doing or uh, uh, in the process of doing? So, so this is just a scheme of uh, uh, age, different ages. And right now, people that uh, exhibit Alzheimer's disease, um, normal, typical uh, not, uh, gen not the genetic form of the disease, we'll get to that, are uh, treated between the ages of uh, 70, 75, all the way to uh, 90, 95, okay, with only a symptomatic treatment. So we have treatments just to the, the, the effects of the disease. We, we can't really treat the disease. There, there are no drugs. We should know that. Drug companies that develop drugs develop it for these stages. And what, what is the reason? The reason is that we have no way to know who is going to be sick in the disease. Okay? So you can imagine that developing a drug for patients at a stage in which their sorry about that, in which their brain already deformed makes no sense. It doesn't work. It can't work. Even the, the best drug, one that is supposed to work, won't won't do it. Okay? So our aim is to um, conduct an, or be able to get to a situation in which we can conduct an early diagnosis of the disease at earlier stages, earlier ages. Okay? And the second strategy is to delay the onset of the disease. Okay? We aim to do it as early as possible. Now, when we think about testing a drug that we develop, or, or a vaccine, as I show you, will show you in a minute, we can do it in several populations. One is the general population. We know that 95% of the individuals that will exhibit Alzheimer's disease, <coughs> we have no way of knowing that they will have the disease. 5% <coughs> of these people exhibit the disease in a manner that is heritable. That is, they have a strong genetic factor that promotes the disease, okay? And in these people, in, only in these 5%, the disease occurs earlier, okay? So if you pass that age, you will probably not have a genetic, strong genetic factor in your disease, okay? So, relax. <laughs> <laughs> or, or not, I don't know, depending on how old you are. But anyway, it's a small percentage. Um, another population, that we can uh, try and target uh, drugs or vaccines for with respect to Alzheimer's is Down syndrome patients. Why is that? 
Individuals with Down syndrome exhibit an early onset of Alzheimer's disease. They exhibit it at the age of 30. <clears throat> Moreover, more than 90% of these individuals will exhibit Alzheimer's. However, Down syndrome can be diagnosed as early as uh, during pregnancy. So, Down syndrome patients, individuals, are a population that we think is the best to test novel uh, vaccines and drugs on because it's enriched, enriched for Alzheimer's. And with relatively short time, we can uh, get a picture of whether this vaccine is efficient. Now, you may think, well, you know, Down syndrome, what what's has to do with Alzheimer's? So fine, some of them, or most of them have uh, uh, Alzheimer's. But you should know that uh, people, or parents to children with uh, uh, Down syndrome, are very much concerned about uh, what will happen with their children later on in life. I remember that uh, after uh, getting a grant for, uh, from the Alzheimer's Association for, for studying a, a vaccine in a Down syndrome, a parent sent me an email and he wrote me that he put a picture of his uh, young four-year-old uh, daughter and he wrote me that he hopes that by the time she reaches uh, an older age of 20, uh, we'll be able to deliver a vaccine so that she at least some of her suffering will be ameliorated. And, and that's a heartbreak, you know. And it tells you, it gives you a feeling of why we are doing the research. So it's important both for the elderly as well as for younger uh, people. Okay, so we, we have mentioned that uh, amyloid beta is the bad guy, okay? We know it by now, or we think we know it by now. And however, why doesn't the body fight this particular protein? Well, the body isn't designed to attack its own, its own proteins. Okay? That's how it's built. It's built to prevent autoimmune diseases. Um, and so previous attempts to vaccinate against this uh, particular protein failed. Why did they fail? They failed 